saga of the great Hudson's Bay Fur Company. And of the brave men who traveled the untrekked wilderness from Labrador to California, from Minnesota to Alaska. Starring Barry Nelson as Jonathan Banner, Hudson's Bay Man. With George Tobias as Pierre Falcon. In the blazing hot summer of 1810, Pierre Falcon and I were ordered to report upriver to Fort Chippewan, where we would be given further instructions. Somebody attacks and counts three first. Somebody seems to. As you were. Nothing wrong, Winslow. This is Captain Orr. And this is, sir. You wouldn't like me to put you on report, would you? No, sir. And I suggest you speak with more respect. To behave like a man, not a weakling. I'm glad not to be a soldier. So am I. At least until it gets cooler. What? Where's the old benefactor? Carry on, Sergeant. What? Run! Chester. Banner, the directors of the Hudson's Bay Company have offered to help His Majesty's government find a route through the Wind River country for possible future military use. We selected you and Falcon as guides and advisors to the expedition. An honor, sir. Oh, we appreciate it. And you were! I change my order until I do continue. It was uh, out of the way, person. Carry on, Sergeant. Run! Run! Hurry! Run! Run! Hurry! Run! Run! Hurry! Run! Run! Captain Morton will be in command of the expedition. part of the country, I'm not too sure. But uh, the Indians, the Balakulas, uh, uh, they're friendly. They will be glad to get out. Obviously, you're going to be of great help, Mr. Banner. And you too. Pierre Falcon, like Mr. Henry said before. Of course. Always takes a bit of time learning you live. You understand that this is a military undertaking and the command will be vested in me. Certainly. To keep everything clear, I'd like you to sign articles of enlistment for the duration of the mission. You mean we have to be soldiers? Well, I don't see why that's necessary, sir. We'll do our best as civilians. 
Of course, I don't expect you to be soldiers. It's simply a matter of form. No harm in it, Banner. And whatever, so long as it's only temporary, and the army doesn't try to steal two of the company's best men. Very well, Captain. Good. Walton marched his men, and us, from dawn until sunset. Privilege as the other men haven't. Supposing any man could sing out for a halt just when he felt like it. Well, I've got a reason, sir. We've reached Bella Coola territory, and Pierre and I had better find the Indians if we're going to get guides. I see. But remember, you are under military discipline. What you mean is you should be ordered to descend for guides. Yes, sir. Very well. You are ordered. Detail! Shun! Forward! Run! He's not human. He's a debtor. Quiet, Winslow. Fool! I heard that. Not feeling well, sir. Hasn't been too much for you, has it, Winslow? I'll ask no more of you than I have of the other men, or myself. No, sir. Ten strokes of the lash. No, please. No, 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 no. I'm in command here, Benno. If you punish this man in front of these Indians, they're liable to lose respect for all white men. And we're not going to go very far without these guides. Carry on, Sergeant. Resume punishment. Four. Five. How long will it take us to get into the valley with the portage over the mountains? About two weeks. A waste of valuable time, but... Ah, 
Well, you can rest your men, and I'll take the Indians and try to find the best way through the mountain. Mr. Bella. Yes? Did I give you an order? No. Are you trying to take command of my men? No, I only assumed. You assumed too much. Seems to be a habit of yours. When I give an order, I expect it to be obeyed. You two men, you're going down the rapid. Try to find the safest way. We'll all be coming after you. We no go. That was stupid. You don't know Indians, Richie. He disobeyed an order. You won't forget that you slapped him and made him lose face in front of strangers. All right, so two men. Officers don't like losing face either, Mr. Banner. Take it. Men. Can you make it, boy? You know, we're falling behind. We can make a litter, sir. Time. Time. We're behind schedule. And then I'll load it down already. And Winslow doesn't want to be a burden to you. He wouldn't be a burden to us, sir. Might as well untie us, Captain. There's no place where we can hide around here. Your contribution, as always, is a little late, Mr. Bell. You want to rest some more, boy? You stay here till the sun goes down. Till it's cool. We'll be back up ahead. You're a young lad. Your strength will come back when the sun goes down. You can catch up with us then. Come on, fool. Let's get moving. We're way behind. Way behind. Find a tree. Get some shade.
you just think Winslow's got a chance of making it? Not if somebody doesn't go back after him. Ten years of soldiering, I've never abandoned a man before. You don't have to now. Can't go against orders. Look, Pierre and I'll go with you. We know this country. We can be back before the captain wakes up. We find the boys that make a deal. Oh, it's an honest deal. We're coming back. Well, that's what I mean. Oh, well, I don't want to make you sad in the bubble. Subordination. Captain, it's useless to go after those Indians. We've lost too many men. Nonsense! They're shamming. Captain, let me lead you back to the fort. Lead? I am the leader of this mission. Now I understand better what I should have known from the start. You want to replace me. Captain, I must take over command. exact opposite of your testimony is the truth. Isn't it, Mr. Banner? You admit that Captain Morton was courageous under fire, that he displayed bravery when the Indians attacked the expedition. Well, then, perhaps Captain Morton, a dedicated officer, only tried, as he maintains, to carry out his mission. 
and you instigated the mutiny. Started it, in fact, long before the Indian attack. If you are all guilty of gross disobedience, as Captain Morton implies, wouldn't it be wiser for you all to get your stories together in such convincing fashion as is shown here? Sir, Captain Morton was a sick man. Doctor, would you judge your patient mentally incompetent? Well, that's a difficult question to answer. It's always a matter of opinion whether a man is mentally incompetent or not. We are all mentally unwell at one time or other. Now, on the whole, I would say that Captain Morton suffered mental fatigue at various times during the march, which is understandable after the ordeal he went through. But there's nothing to suggest that he he was mentally unfit to command them, or is in any way unfit now. In fact, he is responded beautifully and is an excellent. As you can judge, sir. Well, then I suggest we call Captain Morton. I think we'll have to, sir. Call Captain Morton. You're looking so fit, Captain. Don't take a long time. Now, Captain Morton, the question before us is if there were deliberate mutiny on your expedition, or if you were guilty of the needless death of Private Winslow and a reckless waste of lives. Charges against me appear not. As you can undoubtedly tell from the evidence before you. From the very beginning, Banner tried to discredit me. His manner was discourteous. He tried to incite the men against me. Take, for example, what happened to young Winslow. He was so much under Banner's influence, he pretended fatigue, hoping that I would succumb to this pretense of sympathy. But I knew it was all false, and in an attempt to shake Winslow out of his make-believe, I had to leave him behind. I had to tell Winslow I, I wasn't fooling. I had to show him. And those Indians. They refused to obey my command. But did Banner come to my aid? Oh, no, he didn't. He sided with the Indians. All the evidence corroborates your statement, Captain, and I can only apologize for having to call you here to testify. Mr. Watson, many a younger officer would have been overwhelmed. But Banner never fooled me, and he never fooled any of the men under my command. They'll all testify. They'll tell you. Gentlemen, may I... The captain, a question? Yes, of course. Captain, how many men were wounded during the march? They kind of dispirited me again, saying my men were wounded. All my men are safe. Every man who serves under my command is safe. I'm a responsible officer. I look after my men. How many men died, Captain? Died? Ask them. There they are, out there on the parade ground. Call them. <laughs> I'm sorry. It might have gone out for years, and we'd never have known. Attention! Parade! Red! Attention! Parade! Red! Listen, stay out there. My chest out. Eric, I'm not loving your jacket. Not in full. This is now the boss. Winslow. Are you here, boy? Let's oh, speak up. You're real, I'm sick face. Because I have all the time like this, they'll be my orders. You understand, 
But I will do it if we have a trip. Well, answer me. That's a direct order with you. Please, I beg you, please. Please answer. Oh. 